moment, the main theory is focusing on the salt water balance of the body. And that's why a lot of medications are trying to interfere with that salt water balance of the body. Now, how does the salt water balance affect the inner ear? We think it leads to a pressure problem inside the inner ear. And you know, overpressure in one system and under pressure in the other, and then something happens and triggers the, the events or this the spinning spell episodes, which many is known for. You see the, the inner ear, even though it's the oldest sensory organ we have in evolution, it's the oldest sensory organ that developed, it's the first organ that developed actually, uh, when the first fell, a cell dropped onto earth, you know, three billion years ago. Um, the thing is, it, the inner ear is encased in the hardest bone of the human body, so we don't have access to it. So we can't just go in there, take samples, analyze, do this, do that. That's not possible because it's surrounded by bone. So what we are doing is looking for indirect signs, you know, certain changes in, in body fluids, certain changes in the inner ear fluid, which we can try and measure, certain changes in the electric activity of the inner ear. So these are the things we try to measure and out of that, we try and extrapolate what might happen in the inner ear during many years. Yeah. What we start off with, um, with many years disease, is primarily to, to ascertain, one, if they have been properly diagnosed um, to come to the diagnosis of many years disease, as in if they've seen specialists with the required tests followed the, the set criteria, and then given a proper diagnosis of many years. So the treatment um, is dependent on what stage they're in. So in the early stages, it's really management um, that I assist with, talking about lifestyle changes, talking about changes in diet, um, hydration, exercise, etc avoiding certain stimuli that might bring it on. Um, if they do have a deficit, the next level is to go on to um, trying to address that deficit. Um, a lot of the times the deficit is um, associated to get together with their visual problems, so exercises that help um, strengthen that visual vestibular interaction. Um, and then looking to see if they have higher level problems, high level balance problems like um, walking disorders, inability to walk in crowds, to move their head around while they walk, and addressing all of them. It is a whole management of, of that patient because it is not um, a diagnosis that's going to disappear the next day or with a, a simple treatment. It is a long-term process and management and education of these patients in the long term is, is crucial to them, you know, walking the, the rest of their life through this disorder. Well, my first many years attack was at work. Um, I just finished having lunch and I started to get a weird ringing sound in my ear and that quickly progressed to feeling very unbalanced. Um, I was taken to hospital where I had severe vertigo and vomiting and I didn't know what was going on. It was, it was horrible. They were doing tests on me and yeah, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, probably the worst experience of my life. Well, immediately afterwards, I was very tired. I just felt drained, um, completely out of energy. Um, I was almost too tired to, to care too much about what, what was going on at that point. Um, but yeah, I was just unsure about what, what had just happened, um, what it was, would it happen again? Um, yeah, there were quite a few emotions going through, but certainly anxious and stressed and tired. I had a difficult week last week, an extremely difficult week with balance. My experience of many years is that I'm permanently slightly unsteady. Um, I don't suffer from a great deal of um, 
uh, of nausea as a result uh, until it gets uh, more pronounced. Uh, but that almost always occurs during the afternoon. Um, for no reason that I can identify, uh, that's changed in recent days. So mornings have become a difficult period for me and I tend to be more stable in the afternoons. I haven't changed my diet. I haven't, um, to my knowledge, experienced anything externally that would explain that. It's bewildering. It's energy sapping. It's, uh, you know, it destroys your confidence, uh, what you might be able to achieve. It's, um, it's the most confronting uh, thing I've ever experienced. I didn't really know what it was. And actually, the thing that was bothering me most at the beginning was my hearing. Uh, I started having hearing loss, having problems hearing in um, noisy places, and I was having uh, fullness in the ears. So I'd gone to see my GP about that rather than the vertigo. And it wasn't till she mentioned many airs and I looked it up in the dictionary, I realised, oh, that's what, why I've been feeling so sick lately and that's why I had that attack of vertigo, which I recognised as vertigo, but I just didn't know uh, what it was, what was causing it. There's kind of two levels, really. I have um, severe symptoms which come on probably, they're, they're months apart, maybe everything from one to five months apart. The last one I had now was in August, uh, and that um, lasts for hours, anything from two to 12 hours, I'm pretty much uh, confined to bed. Um, having to stay very still to, to avoid very severe vertigo. And uh, um, that's sort of one level I have. And on, on the other level, it's an everyday kind of um, disequilibrium, uh, d sort of a low level vertigo. Uh, which affects just my feeling, of sense of well-being, my sense of balance, a sort of sense of connectivity with the ground um, kind of goes. Um, and that gets worse as the day goes on. So that pretty much by the afternoon or early evening, I'm having those feelings, vertigo. After a period of about two years of remission, um, I was at work one day and suddenly I was on the floor. That's what happened. Couldn't move, um, wondering what, what had happened to me and why the many years had returned. Um, I sought the assistance of a, a colleague and he drove me home. Um, but for me, the, the day wasn't to end. Um, for five hours I was bedridden crawling to the toilet, vomiting um, throughout that, those five hours until it, it stabilised. Um, from there, um, just about every day, um, I was having episodes lasting between three and four hours. Um, the worst ones lasted five hours and they were incredibly violent. In other words, um, they included the, the vertigo and, and the, the vomiting um, and, and for extended periods of time. Well, I nearly didn't because I nearly, you know, thought I can't take this. As a lot of people, I think, do. When you, um, they don't tell you, but when you have surgery, you lose your driver's licence. I'd lost my teaching job. I'd lost my partner. I'd lost, you know, a lot. And I was on, the, I was on Centrelink payments by then. Um, and so um, I saw a good counsellor. Get a good counsellor. Get somebody because you, know, you need to find somebody that's right for you and a very good medical team. I've got an excellent doctor. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been a long journey and it's, it's why the networking is so important, I think, and talking to other people. The positive lessons that I can pass on are that it, it gets better. You do meet new people. You do find out who your friends are. You find out what's important. You have a look at your lifestyle and your own values, I think. And, and um, 
even disabilities in general, I guess, you look at people and suffering and loss and recovery very differently. Uh, very frightening. Um, often they occur, well the, my, the three I experienced, they occurred without warning. Um, they weren't preceded by the usual sense of balance being not good. Um, it was a very severe uh, the head and shoulders trunk thrown forward in the sense that um, you really felt that you were being thrown about by an invisible force which meant that you had to grab something in front of you, um, hold on tight, ex 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 for example, to a table. Because the three, three attacks I had occurred when I was sitting down, luckily. Um, but yeah, very frightening and severe, no control. And then they were followed by a uh, sense of an epileptical um, movement of the head. The main changes um, have been to join up with support groups, originally Tasmania, then the Victorian, and now it's uh, amalgamated under the Many as Australia. But the information from newsletters, books, talking to other people has been by far the best to get an understanding. And secondly, the uh, low salt diet, which is recommended by most people, uh, probably 90% of people around the world with many years, um, recommend that a low salt diet is the only real preventative treatment. And it certainly helped me. The first part of the strategy is a low salt diet, a very strict low salt diet, um, which includes also no caffeine and no alcohol, um, which can have a, a big impact on my lifestyle on a, yeah, on a daily basis. As well as that, I'm on uh, diuretic medication to help reduce the fluid intake. Um, and I also have to take some potassium supplements because the diuretics have um, have the side effect of reducing my potassium levels. I think get a good diagnosis would be an important one. Uh, make sure that if, uh, if your specialist or your GP tells you you have many hairs and they haven't conducted enough tests, go and get the test done. I had everything, from, I had the vestibular testing, I had and the audio, uh, audi, audiometer testing. Um, I had an MRI scan and a CAT scan and just make sure that it's not something that's treatable in a different way. That would be an important thing and also to make sure you've got a, a specialist that wants to help you and isn't, doesn't just send you out of the room without trying anything. I think it's the old story of the give and take of being with like-minded people. Um, because other people who have been through a similar experience can, can tell you and reassure you in a way which professionals cannot. Um, but it also is very helpful, to my, for my, it has been helpful for myself to um, talk to other people and you know, in turn help them. It, um, it, it turns the experience into something of a positive. I love the newsletters. I love to read other people's stories and where they are in the three stages of many years. So they're at the beginning, the middle or the end. Um, their tips yeah, and their advice. And you find that everybody's is a little bit different, what works for them. The low salt, of course, is, does work for most people, which is fantastic, and diuretics and things to avoid the fluid build up in the middle ear. Um, but yeah, just reading and just knowing that you know, you're not alone and there's a lot of people actually that experience it all. Joining the Many Years Support Forum has, has helped me enormously and to, to hear what other people experience is, while I wouldn't ever, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, it, there's, a, there's a strange sort of comfort in knowing that, that what you're experiencing, as bizarre as it might be, as counterintuitive, as atypical as it might be, uh, is normal in some sort of weird way. 
uh, that it can be dealt with. Uh, there's almost always a strategy that someone else has employed and I would urge people to, to seek that kind of help. It's enormously comforting. Um, it, it's tragic that, that so many people suffer this, but it's, they are the greatest resource you can have uh, to try to make sense of it. It certainly made me a stronger person. Um, not only that is that, that I think I've learnt a lot from it. Um, it certainly demonstrated to me that as an individual you have to take ownership of, of your own medical condition and you've got to do the research. You've got to find out as much as you possibly can about the condition. Look at different, uh, different um, uh, um, literature that's available. Certainly, you know, I've, I've joined the Minius um, Society, which has been an invaluable source of information. Um, I haven't been able to attend the, the, um, the, uh, the, the various meetings, but um, the, the actual access to that information has been, um, you know, crucial to, um, to, to me moving forward, knowing that there are other people out there, and in many cases, a lot of them are in, are experiencing far worse um, uh, symptoms than, than myself. Um, and there are other diseases that are far worse than, than many years. But um, I think it's important to acknowledge that, you know, we all, all have a right to life um, in, in, in you know, our, our own way and to have that ownership. Mm -hmm.